I love sex. Who doesn't? Love Jiren, and I trust her gut and brain. Pizzazz. Cronenberg does BL Hamlet. <laughs> Hi, hello. I haven't stepped out of the house for three days. <laughs> I've been holed up working. But you wanna see something cute? Look, we got a little a little book set up. Yes, I decided to just cover this area with books. Yeah. I just feel like I need to step out of the house, but I'm, I'm going out to just do more work. I, we just need to change the scenery. This, this is the fit of the day. We've got our gargantuous capacious bag here with my iPad and DOS shirt. Anyone like DOS? She's a, she's a queen. And black blazer, posh, table tennis club, cap, gray jeans. Let's, let's go touch some grass. Not really though, I'm going to another place, just coffee. <laughs> Yeah, let's go. It's your boy Nate. I read books because reading is sexy, and if you're not sexy, how did I fuck that up? <laughs> I read books because reading is sexy, and if you're not reading, you're not sexy. Okay, here with some book updates. I finished a few in this busy whirlwind of work. I've been so busy, and uh, it's just this past week and this week that I just have to get through, and we'll have. Plenty of time, plenty, plenty of time for reading. So, yes. I started the month with Tropic of the Sea by Satoshi Kon. I, I think I've talked extensively about Satoshi Kon, but he's most well known as a film director, but he wrote also a manga. And this one was nice, you know, Ponyo origin story, anybody? but it's really quiet. I was actually expecting more like violence or like fantasticalism, but it's it's actually quite tame. Given that his younger self created this, I, I thought he would have gone full out, but I don't know if it was like editor's choice or just this was a story that was sort of important to him in some way but it's it's cute it's really pg not much really happens but it's about a little seaside town that's getting some 
major city developments being that it's sort of the countryside and there's a mermaid egg and the corporate big building bussy boys i don't know what you call them but these businessmen come in and they want to take the egg and the egg originally belongs to this kid and his family and he has to protect it at all costs and then something strange happens with the egg therefore ponyo origin story but yeah not much really happens in the first three-fourths of the book and then all the like fun stuff happens in the last quarter but it's still quite tame that's fine given that the artwork was really cool really beautiful to see the world building an atmosphere that Cohn was focusing on with the coastal town of uh, the country and it's it's really nice it was serialized so that explains why some of the pacing was a bit off and also learned that he was stressed <laughs> while making this and also he was working on other things film projects and he was like drinking a lot so he just wasn't in the best mental state while this was going on and which is sad because this is his baby this is the firstborn that like is neglected and then you know millennium actress and paprika are, are the second and third children that you know got all the love and proper development he was still learning how to do things with this but yeah i told myself i wanted to read more manga and i'm glad i picked this up it was nice nice way to start may then I moved on to the Kindle. We had an ARC from Rebellion Publishing, The Death I Gave Him by, by MX Leo. Good shit. This was fun. I told myself I wanted to read more sci-fi as well. And look, look what we did. We read a gay sci-fi. Yes, this is Cronenberg does BL Hamlet. Could not have asked for more. Well, I think, I think the story was fine. It's very plot heavy, but it's about the neuromapper. And the neuromapper can preserve your ongoing thoughts, your way of thinking, and everything that makes up who you are. It's almost sort of this like suspended immortality. We find our buddy Hayden, his dad is murdered. Revenge, doubt, mortality, immortality. All of these things wrapped up in a gay sci-fi thriller without much of the thrill, I want to say. But man, the BL, the BL hits. There were only like two scenes where it like really hit, but it like hit strong. It was like good. Hey, M, if you're, if you find this review some way, some shape or form, but some of the most interesting sex scenes I've read in a really long time. I don't want to spoil it either because it's kind of just, it's just whack. If you're going to pick this up, please read it for the sex scenes because they're great. I, I wanted to talk about the sex scenes with somebody. They're they're just wonderful, but it's very Cronenberg-ish. It's The book has like a cinematic quality to it in that it's very plot heavy, uh, very theatrical. It's Shakespeare. What, what are you going to... Anyway just it's it's made for a film and i can already imagine it being done by cronenberg because you know what was it in oh crimes of the future which if anybody doesn't know it's all about surgery being the new sex and our organs just because we're so trapped in the digital how do we excite ourselves again and it's through surgery and the harvesting and removing of organs and it's not the greatest film but it's fine for a Cronenberg. But yes, I can already imagine if Cronenberg does BL, this this would be it. This this has to be his project. I'm claiming it as so. You heard it here first. Cronenberg BL. But yeah, it's a lot of fun. This is M's debut novel. So there were some kinks. There's pacing issues and it's quite predictable, but that's because it's a retelling of Hamlet. So if you haven't read Hamlet, this might be a joy for you. The book is also told through CCTV footage, audio transcripts, letters and footnotes from different perspectives. We get first person, third person. It's like really rich in narrative and with its many different forms, it's just a really fun story. 
And I gave it four stars on Goodreads, but on Storygraph, it's closer to like a 3.5, 3.75. Quite high because of recency bias. And also I just, it needs to be more gay. This needs to be more gay. If it's more gay, it gets four stars. We didn't, we need more of the weird neuromapper sex scenes. Wow. Yeah, I, I thought those were exquisite, exquisite. The death I gave him out by Rebellion Publishing, September 12th. Look out for it. Okay, then to continue with the gay train, I decided to start Alexander Chi's How to Write an Autobiographical Novel. I've been wanting to read this for like so long. And yeah, it's time, it's time. It's May, it's AAPI month, hey. And oh God, what a handsome cat she is. Also, what a treat this is. I love that. I didn't realize it was sort of like an essay collection, uh, which is quite nice. First essay is about his time in Mexico him as an exchange student and what it means to be an expat, oh, which I should read for you. Cause you know, as an expat, it speaks. He speaks to me, Mr. Chi. This last evidence of my American constitution was a final reminder, not just that I was leaving, but that I was not from there. I really was only an imposter. I would never have this life, no life but the one I had. America, now the exile of me. You know, every, exchange students' sentiments about home, what we make of home, especially when we leave and when we return and it's just odd. It's that really strange feeling of coming back and people saying, oh, you're back, without really understanding like what has actually happened to you. And it's not something that you can like relay in the most grandiose of confessions, but it's like, it's just so, internal that it just has to be related a book <laughs> just makes more sense that way the next essay is about tarot reading which is cool didn't know that tarot reading was illegal in new york you have to like claim it as a form of entertainment before you begin and it's quite interesting enjoying it a lot for aapi month let's go asians let's go i wanted to do some Asian reading because I haven't given them enough love to be honest. So I've got a few a few books. We've got Why is the Salary Man Carrying a Surfboard by Rei Masaki. He's Japanese American, has spent time in America, and currently lives in Japan as a graphic designer. Wrote this really interesting text about racism and black identity within Japan and advertisement, where that comes from and everything. So Really curious about that. Also, the cover is fantastic. It's like intentionally blurry. It's wonderful. Then I have Don Lee's Yellow, collection of short stories. I've talked about this before, but we're doing it for the cover alone. Like, what is a sexier read than this for AAPI month? Like, <laughs> you are what you read. And then I've been thinking about this a lot. You know, this is a book that I've carried with me apartment to apartment. I had this when I was in France. I had this when I was in LA. I had this when I was in San Francisco. I had this when I'm here. And it's just this text that I deem so important because like a transformative part of my 20s. I wanna know if I still hold it to such high regard. And I might do a rereading of it, not sure. But when we talk about Asian American writers, we kind of never talk about Tao Lin. And like, let's be real, uh, Tao Lin, I think we can, all agree is a very strange person in fiction, in nonfiction, and in his just like real life. I read his Leave Society last year, and though that had issues with it, he kind of works in the same, I wanna say headspace as Sheila Hetty. Just this really did it for me. And then Leave Society was sort of a letdown, but yeah, I kind of wanna return to this to see if it, it still does something for me. And it's just so shiny. I love it. Yeah. Also, this is an Asian American, but it's queer. And I think that's enough. And it's from Singapore. And Singapore is a very diverse place. So I have Alfian Sot's collection of plays, 
I read his other collection last year as well, and I really enjoyed them. Really gives you sort of the queer scene in Singapore and sort of the issues that they deal with. And I don't think a lot of people talk about Alfian Sot and what's better than reading a play? I think this will sit closer to end of May, closer to June as the weather gets a little warmer. Cause yeah, reading plays for summer, is just like, I don't know, just hits different. I think it's that whole thing of like, in summer I want to eat al fresco. And because I'm eating al fresco, it means I'm in conversation and discussion with someone constantly. I'm always meeting people. I don't know why that is. I hate summer. I really do hate summer. But then I always find myself out every weekend for, I, I don't know. I'm an idiot, okay? I'm a hypocritical, contradictory idiot. Because I'll be speaking a lot, I feel, um, what better way to sharpen your words than reading a play and learning how conversations work and word choice and all. So yeah, gonna do that. And that's AAPI month. For me, in terms of reading, let me know what you're reading. As always, be well, do good work, keep in touch. With lime, and guess what I brought? This is my lifestyle, check this out. Here's my wallet, here's this pocket, right? Lime packets. And I literally specifically have these in my wallet for when I get a tequila soda because they always give me a dry ass lime that adds no lime juice flavor. And so- Had had the hoe, folks. I just got back home from work. Yes, today's like my last day of like major work. After I film this video, actually I have to do more work and it's a Friday. That's what we're doing on Friday. Work, work, work. Cause capitalism, I love money. <laughs> I love money so much that I have to show you this major book haul. This is the last of the book depository haul because womp 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 book depository shut down so we we had to do some damage we and we we did more damage because as much as blackwells is nice i haven't ordered yet but like browsing through everything the ui just doesn't do it for me it's just very very old school like some it needs like a whole redesign it needs to be more navigational it's um it's lacking some uh pizzazz if you know what i mean still feels like it's meant for like 50 or 60 year old people or does that just mean that there aren't enough young readers who knows but here to do a haul oh all i didn't finish what i was gonna say i was like this is it this is all i get for the rest of the year well i i bought more books after this and and you'll see you'll see but let, let's get through this tiny little stack. Here we go. Are y'all ready? Yeah. First up. Oh, yes, I've been waiting for this for so long. If an Egyptian cannot speak English, it's going around the tubes. First heard about it from Jiren and yeah, love Jiren and I trust her gut and brain a lot. So can't wait to dig into this. I heard it's quite brainy and I'm all brains. I love, I love me some, some thinking, but this looks absolutely fun. Up next. Ah, uh -huh, yes. Okay. Okay. Y'all, I'm, I'm a big like vlog watcher. So if any of you like vlog, I, I love me a good vlog and one of the OG vlogsters here is Damon Dominique. I love Damon. You know, he's sexy, he's smart, he's thinky, he's sassy, he's hilarious. I, I used to follow him um, when him and his friend used to vlog together in LA. That's, that's sort of the starting point. And then he moved to France and I was like, oh, this guy, this guy knows what he's doing. Damon Dominique's book, You Are a Global Citizen, Guide Journal for the Culturally Curious. And hey, that's me. I'm, I'm culturally curious. Okay, also I can't tell, and this doesn't show up very well, but it looks dirty. <laughs> so excited to dip into this. 
Oh shit, it's a journal I didn't realize. Well, I guess we're gonna have to do some work in here. But yeah, lots of fun. David Dominique, he's great because he speaks a bunch of languages. He has a French course that's pretty good. Like I wish I took that instead of, you know, spending a shit ton of money in my undergrad for my classes. He's just an overall incredible human being and has some really good insights into traveling and how, you know, tra travel is good for the soul. We all know that, but he actually enacts on it and it's really cool the way that he's been able to go around the world, show us different perspectives, and also how to just be in so many different cultures. So yes, can't wait to dig into this. Cutie patootie. Try to find out about how your hometown was founded. How has your hometown impacted your identity? How could your identity have developed differently had this history gone another way? <laughs> Prompts. He's making me do the homework. Ugh. Okay, whatever. Next. Yes. Yes, yes, yes. I feel like I'm also the last person to read this, but we got Funny Weather, Art in an Emergency by Olivia Lang. Profiles Basquiat, O'Keefe, Maggie Nelson, Sally Rooney, David Bowie, Freddie Mercury. Great, great stuff. I, I just, I want... Yeah, I want to read about art. Here we got it, Funny Weather, with uh, Wanarovich on the cover. It's cute pastel pink. Like, bring this to brunch, it's incredible. It's the pink with the gray that I absolutely love. And this font, it's, it's great. It's just done right, this cover. Next. Doo -doo -doo. Ah, yes, okay. I believe I heard about this first from CJ Reads, and I was like, I need to pick that up. And then it was later I found it on one of the highlights of Melissa Broder's Instagram, where I was like, okay, now I really have to pick this up. But it's Paul Takes the Form of a Mortal Girl by Andrea Lawler. Is, is, is pink? Pink is always great for summer, okay? Is always good. Paul takes the form of a mortal girl. Can't wait. Okay, next. Oh, yes. Wasn't it Pato that was like, spoke 20 minutes about the right to sex? I'm doing it. I'm doing it. Also, Jiren, yes. I'm doing it. I can't wait. Lots of good shit. I love sex. Who doesn't? But I want to know, what is the right to sex? Okay, up next. Aha! Yes! Kieran, did you read this? I forget, but I've got Non Things by Pyong Chul Han. He is a thinker. I believe originally from Korea, but he spends his time in Germany. I think this was translated from German. Yes, it's translated from German. It's about us not inhabiting the earth and dwell under the sky. There are beings replaced by Google Earth and the cloud. The terrestrial order is giving way to digital order. The world of things is being replaced by a world of non-things, a constantly expanding infosphere of information and communication, which displaces objects and obliterates any stillness and calmness in our lives. It's an essay, a little critique on life and our ongoings in the present tense. I've been meaning to read him for a really long time, just never had the chance, and now is the time. Thanks to Book Depository closing. Oh, this is so sad. It's the last one for now. Okay. Oh yes, I'm so ready for this. So ready for this. We got Earth Angel by Madeline Cash. Yes, I got this book just for this cover. How, how could you not? I believe it was Torin that, it was somebody else, but Torin posted about it and I love Torin. Really just wanna read this because of the cover. Look, that's great. How can you not? It's just fab. But this is a collection of short stories 
an ISIS recruit, adolescent beauty queen, and a childless millennial walk into a bar. That's all you need to know. That's all you need to know. But yes, a collection of short stories. Can't wait. This is just also such a sexy read for summer, is it not? Short stories. Let's go. That's the book haul, baby. That's the book haul. I think I'm probably gonna get to most of these for summer, late summer. Can't wait. Oh, also please follow me on Medium. There's some good, good writing bits. If you haven't bought my novel yet, which you should. Sorry, it's not a novel. It's a novella. I have it. If you haven't yet, it's available on Big Cartel downstairs, linked below. But adolescence leaves. I did this. Yes. But if you if you want the free content, as these vlogs have been, <laughs> I've also write articles sometimes on Medium. I used to be um, quite quite active on Medium. And now that sort of like work has kind of cooled down, I'm going to write more on Medium. And if you like articles about sort of my brain space, my visitations to museums and glances at um, artwork and galleries and such as that, life in Korea, where my brain space is, ATM, follow along. Medium, Saigon Garçon, downstairs. I, uh, there's a couple of articles on there that are fun. I'm also in the midst of how to write an autobiographical novel by Alexander Chi. I'm loving it. I'm loving it. I'm about 100 pages shy of finishing and it's just fab. I'm in a chapter right now where he talks about gardening. How precious is this man? <laughs> like, God, total heartthrob. If like I met him, he talks about, oh, uh, there's this great essay about him working as a waiter. Oh, uh, as a waiter caterer, which I used to do. And I loved it, to be honest. You know, I got into some shenanigans, but um, for one of the biggest homophobes and that was uh, just really beautifully rendered, just the complications and moral ambiguity of what one should do as a queer person when navigating a situation like that especially when like you're not rich and you're working and all of that, it's just wonderfully done. And then he talks about gardening and then just like tips on writing. Oh, oh can I read this little thing for you? I absolutely adore it. But in one portion of the book, it's a hundred things about writing a novel and I'll read, ooh, it's a 79 to 83 that I'll read, 79. What is it you want from me? The novel asks. 80. What is it you want from me? The novel tells you. 81. Everything in here is about you, the novel says. 82. This feels like a trick to keep you reading it or writing it, a lie that is also true. And this is another thing a novel is. 83. In the novel, the true things often run around like children under sheets, playing at being ghosts. Otherwise, you would ignore them. Not now, you would tell them if they arrived without their sheets. It feels good. It feels like I'm back in a 400 course, a master's course at my first semester, doing an MFA. It, it, it's good. It's good to be back with the people that have sort of shaped my voice. I will say the workshop, it's a good place to be. Um, but no, thank, thank you all for being here. And thank you to everyone who has purchased this. Uh, it, it's scary. It's scary. Cause like once you like spent money on this, you literally like, like paid money and severed like a part of my organ, like a pretty dire and important organ of myself, my heart. Uh, it is scary. It is scary. I will say that given that I spent five years on this when it really shouldn't have taken five years. It was just, you know, sure, part of the work was writing, but part of the work was also living. And <laughs> also part of the work was, uh, yeah, processing a lot of the aches, quakes, and shakes of all the background of the novel. But anyway, 
Jalen, are you gonna interview me for this? Anybody? <laughs> anyway, thanks for being here, as always. I really do appreciate your presence, especially in the comments. Also, always wanna know what you're reading. How are you feeling? Let me know. Let, let a boy know. All things and what they used to be Hi, hello from your regular dirty mirror. This is the fit. I'm going to the city today to get a haircut because this is doing too much. And then maybe catch a pop up. I actually have a bit of work still to do. Today is actually the last, last day, the real last day. And I have to be around a laptop. So I'm bringing my iPad today. Hence the slouchy Uniqlo U spring summer slouch bag. I forget what this is called. Anyway, doing that. We got our UCLA tea. Second day in a row wearing it. I'm gonna wash it today. And then uh, this like oversized dad shirt. Gray jeans and of course, Sunny's book truck, unreliable narrator. And we're also going to try and finish up how to write an autobiographical novel by Alexander Chi. So yes, should be a good day. Let's go. I just got my ticket for the Kijun sample sale and I have to wait about an hour, which is fine because I have some work to do, but there's a bookstore here, so I'm gonna go into the bookstore.